and we're back. I'm going to start doing some work on the charger, try and get it back on the road. Before I get underneath it and start filming everything or trying to fit the camera and me underneath the car, I thought I'd start by taking you around the car and showing you around it. Yes, yes, I know a lot of you already know what a 68 charger looks like, but I thought I'd show you around my 68 charger. Let's see the condition it's in, what needs doing to it, and then we'll get into replacing parts to put it back on the road. So without further ado, let's get into it. For those of you that have never been this close to one before, it's about 18 foot long. I've no idea what that is in metres. I believe the right way to do it, when you're doing a video involving an old car, is to start in the boot. Or if you're outside the UK, start in the trunk. So, as you can see, there's no parts in here. A few bits and pieces from the last time we used for camping. But it's got a nice big boot. The original carpet's still there. Boot goes all the way back to the back of the seat. That's fairly solid. Now there is some rust damage coming through. Got some blisters there that I need to take care of. And it's also starting to go up in that corner, if you can see those. Going across the other side, there's a bit there on the bottom of that panel. Now as far as I'm aware, underneath these panels in the factory, they're not painted, they're bare metal inside the boot lid. And we've got a couple more blisters coming up here, all that need taken care of. The vinyl roof, unfortunately, we had some storms over here through the winter and some panels grew off the blew off the garage roof. Now they landed on the charger and they cut through the vinyl roof. So I have no choice but the vinyl roof, unfortunately, is going to have to come off. It's a real shame because it's the original vinyl roof that's been on the vehicle since 1968. So looking inside, now it is an air conditioning car, or is a car with air conditioning. Unfortunately, the air conditioning has never been connected. It's never worked at all. And if you've watched any of the previous videos, you'll know that I've removed the air conditioning pump because it was doing nothing but sap power from the car. And obviously I don't want to sap, do anything to zap the power. All the seats are in amazing condition, even the armrest. Now I have no confirmation that these are the original seats. I think they've been recovered at some point in the past, but the central armrest there, both bucket, bucket seats, no headrests on these ones, didn't come with it as an option from the original one in the States. The back seats, all in amazing condition, no splits, no tears, no rips, as is the headlining. You can see the headlining up there, that's in great condition as well, no tears or rips in that. Dashboard, all the gauges on the dashboard work, you got the speedometer. There's, uh, there's a clock there. Unfortunately, this model that I, when I bought it, it doesn't have a tic tac tock, so that might be something I'd be interested in, in finding in the future. The rest of the gauges there, the fuel gauge, the temperature gauge, the oil pressure gauge all work. The ammeter gauge doesn't, it's been bypassed. I bypassed that long after I got the car because uh, there is a possibility with all of the power for the car coming through one cable in the back of the ammeter there's a possibility that it may cause a fire or a short circuit which will cause a fire and obviously I don't want that so I bypass the ammeter so that no longer works that's not the original radio but it is a retro one that's the the black interior the color of the car just in case you're wondering it's uh, it was painted back in 1998 it came into the country in 1987 and it was painted this color in 98 which I believe is Jaguar Nightfire Red. Now, I was hoping to find a 440 for the power plant on the for the car. Couldn't get a 441, so I couldn't find one at the time. So this one's the 383. I'm going to get myself out of the way so you can see in there. The engine's all original, no modifications whatsoever as far as the running of the engine is concerned. Uh, it does run, it does drive, it just needs a couple of coolant pipes that run from down here on the bottom of the radiator, I don't know if you can see one just there, there's one there and there's one down there that at the minute is covered with a bit of rubber hose because it leaks. As unfortunately I cross threaded the, th um, the pipe when I was putting it in the new radiator. So I do have a couple of new coolant pipes to go on, they're going to be going on straight away. 
and there's also a new starter motor. I'm taking the original starter motor off, which is way down there behind the headers, and uh, replacing it with a mini starter, as most people do. And then once that's done, it should be able to fire up, start running and driving, and get back out on the road. It needs a good clean. In fact, it needs a very good clean. But the original colour, I don't know if you can see it, down there underneath the blower motor, the original colour was just a flat red, or a gloss red. If you're in the UK, more of a Russell red from a net from a Ford than, uh, than anything else. I don't know the actual color code for the Mopar gloss red, but that's what we're uh, we're looking for on that. I've just dropped. So that's what under the bonnet looks like. As I say, there's some rust damage on it, and obviously a lot of filth. Uh, but we'll get round to all of that and get all that taken care of. All these little blemishes that are uh, coming up everywhere, they'll all be taken care of. There's a crack in the paintwork there, which as far as I'm aware from the factory, there's lead under there to create the joint. So we'll, uh, we'll sand that down, take care of that. And obviously looking forward this time of year to getting the car back on the road. The wheels aren't standard, they're not stock wheels. I'll put my own wheels on. These are Wolf Race slot mag wheels. The front ones are 7 by 15 and the rear ones, if you can see it there, are 8.5 by 15. But that's pretty much it for now guys. We'll uh, do the next video. We'll get underneath the car. See if I can set it on camera so we can see where the coolant pipes are that I'll be changing. And then the starter motor. And then we'll go from there. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye for now.